to an ABC News exclusive and the national conversation tonight. The debate over whether Apple should help the FBI break into the iPhone used by Syed Farouk, one of the San Bernardino killers. Tonight, right here, my exclusive interview with Apple CEO Tim Cook, who is standing firm, saying this is not about one iPhone. This is about hundreds of millions of iPhones and protecting everyone, American families, and the information they store on their phones. And he says what the FBI is now asking would set a dangerous precedent. Two polls just this week showing the country divided. So we want you to listen tonight and let us know what you think. As we sit here, you know some of the families of the victims in San Bernardino have now come out in support of the judge's order that Apple helped the FBI unlock that iPhone. One family reportedly saying we're angry and confused as to why Apple is refusing to do this. What would you say to those families tonight? David, they have our deepest sympathy. What they've been through, no one should have to go through. Apple has cooperated with the FBI fully in this case. Uh, they came to us and asked us for all the information we had on this phone and we gave everything that we had. But this case is not about one phone. This case is about the future. What, what is at stake here is, can the government compel Apple to write software that we believe would make hundreds of millions of customers vulnerable around the world, including the U.S.? And you'd have to write that system in order to unlock that phone? Yes, the only way we know would be to write a piece of software that we view as sort of the software equivalent of cancer. We think it's bad news to write. We would never write it. We have never written it. And that is what is at stake here. The FBI, though, says it believes that Syed Farouk used that phone to communicate with his wife, his accomplice. And I'm curious, do you struggle at all with the possibility that there could be information on that phone that could reveal other plots, other people who were involved in planning the San Bernardino attack? David, if we knew a way to get the information on the phone that we haven't already given, if we knew a way to do this that would not expose hundreds of millions of other people to issues, we would obviously do it. I want to get to what the FBI director, James Comey, has said. He said it's not about a slippery slope. It's about, quote, 14 people who were slaughtered and many more had their lives ruined. Maybe the phone holds the clue to finding more terrorists. Maybe it doesn't. But we can't look the survivors in the eye and ourselves if we don't follow any possible lead out there. Do you understand where he's coming from? I do understand where he's coming from. And this is an incredibly complex issue to place a back door in the iPhone. We believe it does put hundreds of millions of customers at risk. Let me ask you this. You've invited me to Apple before. The stories are legendary about new products with black drapery over them, the, the locked doors, the secrecy. And if any American company can keep a secret, it's Apple. To those who might say, why didn't the FBI and Apple team up far earlier in one of those secret labs and get this done, and, and no one would have ever had to know about it? Well, I, I can't talk about uh, the tactics of the FBI. They've chosen what they've done, and they've chosen to do this out in the public uh, for, for whatever reasons that uh, they have. What we think at this point, given it is out in the public, is that we need to stand tall and stand tall on principle. There's probably more information about you on your phone than there is in your house. Our smartphones are loaded with our intimate conversations, our financial data, our health records. They're also loaded with the location of our kids in many cases. And so it's not just about privacy, but it's also about public safety. But in your quiet moments, do you have any concern that you might be able to prevent a terrorist attack by breaking into that phone? David, some things are hard, and some things are right, and some things are both. This is one of those things. And in this case, you believe there are some things that just should never be created? Correct. But Tim Cook tells us they talked to the FBI early on, giving them advice, he says, on other ways to best get information from that iPhone, to plug it in, to back it up to the iCloud. Did they do that? Uh, unfortunately, in the days, the early days of the investigation, uh, an FBI, FBI directed the county to reset the iCloud password. When that is done, the phone will no longer back up to the cloud. And so I, I wish they would have contacted us earlier so that that would not have been the case. How crucial was that missed opportunity? It is very crucial. The White House said this week that the FBI's request is, quote, limited in scope. 
limited in scope. Do you agree with that? And have you talked to the president on this? I have not talked to the president. I will talk to the president. Uh, do I think it's limited? No. You have talked to the president before on these issues yes. of privacy and security. Are you disappointed there wasn't more of a dialogue with the administration before this swift action from the Justice Department? Yes. You wish there was more done? Yes. And I think there should have been. Uh, we, this filing, uh, we found out about the filing from the press. I'm curious, Tim. Did you ever think that you'd find yourself at the center of uh, such a crucial national debate? No. Uh, this, is, this is not a position that we would like to be in. It is a very uncomfortable position. Uh, to oppose your government on something doesn't feel good. And to oppose it on something where we are advocating for civil liberties, which they are supposed to protect, it is incredibly ironic. Apple has until Friday to respond to the judge's order that it assists the FBI, their legal team is preparing. The full interview with Tim Cook on our website right after World News Tonight at abcnews.com. And then tonight on Nightline, I asked Tim Cook about Donald Trump's call to boycott Apple.